As Christmas draws ever nearer, I feel it's time for some reflection. Tonight I have a vodka and Diet Coke. And I'm going to reflect on some fragrances that have been memorable for me this year. So 2023 in reflection, there's some fragrances that have really stood out to me. They're not necessarily fragrances I bought this year or fragrances that were released this year, but rather fragrances I have some great memories attached to this year. So let's get straight into it. We'll start with one that I bought in November when I was in Florence and that is this one here, Muschio from Santa Maria Novella. A beautiful, lightly floral musk. It's clean and dirty, mostly clean, but there's definitely a dirtiness that's more sticking out at the beginning. And the reason this one is memorable is really just because it is attached to this holiday that I had where I explored uh, Florence and Pisa. I also had a couple of days in Dublin as well and I visited my dad. I put it all together in one trip and it was such a good time. It was so nice and this was my souvenir from that trip and so that's why it's here in memorable sense and it's just such a lovely. I'm going to spray a little bit. It's the kind of fragrance you just want to spray on your clothes. It's just got that feel to it. And it's just so nice. I do love my musk. We do know this now, I think. I am a musk whore. And so this one is Muschio from Santa Maria Novella. And it was attached to a wonderful holiday. And this one here is Hera from Papillon. And this is my favourite Papillon fragrance. But I think they're all amazing. The reason this one is so special is it's attached to a memory and it's not a, a particularly special or interesting night but I wore this on a night out and it made me feel like a goddess I know it sounds crazy but you know when you you just feel amazing and it really was attached to the way this perfume was smelling it just made me feel so good I just I did have a really good night nothing significant but it was just such a nice night and I felt so good and this perfume played a huge part in that and this perfume has played many and many a part in me feeling really good about myself when I wear it it's one of those that make me feel special I feel like I've made an effort when I'm wearing Hera I've had compliments wearing Hera and I just absolutely love to wear Hera. I try not to wear her too often because she does feel very special and if you don't know Hera, she was actually created by Liz Moores for her daughter's wedding, her daughter Jasmine. It was a custom scent for her daughter and then after the wedding Jasmine very kindly said to her mum you have to share this perfume with the world and I think I'm not the only one that is very, very glad about that. It obviously has jasmine in it, but it also has some other florals. It has orange blossom, it has a little bit of rose. The florals are, are sparkly and vibrant in the opening, and then they sort of calm down. The base is somewhere between a Chypre and an Oriental, really. It's, it's got a little bit of vanilla, it's got a little bit of sweetness but it also has a tiny bit of oak moss. I think it's got patchouli and labdanum as well. So it's quite rich, but it's not too sweet. It's just very, very special in my opinion. Very, very special. And it made me feel so good every time I've worn it. And so that is Hera from Papillon. This one was a gift, it's actually a Christmas gift, but I had to order it and therefore of course I had to open it and I've had to wear it. Uh, from my mum, it is Le Maroc Pour L. This one is memorable for several different reasons. A, it's a beautiful gift from my mum. B, I used to have it years ago, very, very early on in my fragrance journey. In fact, it's one of the fragrances that really marked the beginning of me really getting into fragrances. I remember very specifically having a sample that I bought from Les Sauteurs in London. It was at the same time I got a sample of Portrait of a Lady and I loved them both. I couldn't decide which one I wanted. 
Uh, I eventually got, I eventually had both of them. Uh, Le Maroc Port L, I had for several years. I talked about it on YouTube a lot very early on in my YouTube journey. There's some embarrassing videos of me talking about Le Maroc Port L. Hello people, this is my scent of the night. I thought I'd bring it to you in video form. Um, so I'll start with what I started with because I've actually got two fragrances on. First off is this, um, I've only got a little bit left, the Morocco Port L by Andy Tower. And I started off, I was just going to wear that on its own because I love it. It's um, really rich, spicy, incensey rose that I totally am in love with. I'm definitely going to have to get a bottle of that. And Sweetie decided that we wanted to do a very quick scent of the day. I'm actually just off to work. I'm feeling a bit tired and a little bit despondent. So I've decided to treat myself to a Le Maroc Port L by Andy Tower. That one, I've spoken about it before. Just feeling a little bit bleh today. Can't be asked to go to work. So me and Sweetie, we thought we'd wear something a little bit special. So it has lots and lots of memories anyway, and then of course I, I, I've wanted it for a year. So I think it was it was about this time last year I got a sample of it, another sample from Les Santers, and I really absolutely loved it, and I had to have it. But I've been very very patient because it's not a cheap fragrance. And then eventually uh, my mum said, "What do you want for Christmas?" I said, "Oh, can I have some money, please, to put towards a perfume?" And this was the perfume that I chose. And it's, yeah, I've, and I've loved wearing it. It's quite intense. When you first spray it, it's very, very strong. And I actually had someone tell me they didn't particularly like it on me. So it's definitely not a crowd pleaser. It smells quite incense-y. It's rose and jasmine. It smells very incense-y, lots of resins, quite spicy, quite rich. For me, I absolutely love it. And so that is Le Maroc Pour Elle. Another fantastic memory from 23 is discovering the house of Dreamhouse Ikirio. I really enjoyed, I was sent some samples from Maddie, the vegan perfume girl, and also Sarah Mays. Sarah Mays is the reason I was interested in Ikirio. She absolutely loves most of their fragrances and talks about them often, and I was so intrigued for so long, but I thought, they're based in the US, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to buy them, to pay the shipping, to potentially pay customs, so I wrote it off. In fact, I remember looking once and there wasn't shipping available to the UK, but that has since changed. So I got through some lovely samples from Sarah and Maddie and absolutely fell in love with well, the first one was bees and butterflies I, I smelt it live on a I think it was on a live or on a video but I smelt it for the first time on YouTube and I was, I was just loved it I'm just so excited because I've been wanting to try these for so long and mm, I can smell it in the air I had a feeling I was gonna like these and based on what I'm smelling at the moment I have to, I have to say I, I I, I think so. I think they are pretty special. It's not what I expected. It's lighter. This is really beautiful. And if, if you're expecting something thick, rich, unctuous, then think again. This is light, like a butterfly. It's like a butterfly in a sweet shop. <laughs> it's fruity. I get a light fruitiness, but it's all very gentle. Yeah, it smells like fruity fizzy sherbet powdery butterfly wings different colors pastel colors i love this it is whimsical it's ethereal it's like being in fairyland it's like what a fairy would smell like that's what it is and this one here at beige floor is sort of a flanker of bees and butterflies so i actually blind bought this one because I, I, I liked Bees and Butterflies a lot, but I thought I'm gonna try Beige Floor. I like the sound of it, and it's supposed to be sort of similar or a flanker. And I remember smelling this for the first time. Honestly, this is so beautiful. I'll spray some in the air. This is, it's like the happiest, most delicious summer of your life. It smells to me like warm butter with 
tropical flowers steeped in it and melted coconut oil and maybe some flour like actual uh, bread flour you know uh, not flowers flour almost a little bit bready it's just t it's like it's sort of gourmet it's a floor mond it's definitely a floor mond it's just beautiful and so this being my first blind buy and my first purchase from Akirio and then sort of opened up the rabbit hole of Akirio so this one's very special to me I wore it much more in the summer although it doesn't matter just because it smells a bit summery doesn't mean I can't wear it in the winter but for some reason I haven't been reaching for my more tropical sweeter fragrances at the moment but I feel like wearing this right now. I'm already wearing Iris Ganache because I'm about to go out on my Christmas party and that's my fragrance for tonight. But this smells so beautiful. As soon as I smelled it earlier, I really wanted to wear it, but I'd already settled on Iris Ganache. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna be wearing this one very, very soon. So that's Beige Floor from Ikirio. 2023 was the year that my collaboration with 4160 Tuesdays was launched. We actually started it, uh, our chatting and, uh, and our ideas and, and everything started in 2022, but it was 2023 that it was made real and was delivered to people, including myself. And so this is Hush Hush, this is the Eau de Toilette because that was always my favourite version of the three. They are all stunning, but Eau de Toilette is the one that encapsulated my idea the most. And this is a musky iris uh, cigarette box. There's something minty about it. There's no mint note. It's almost like there's a box of minty cigarettes in here. And it's so it's papery. It's just a tiny bit of tobacco. It doesn't smell like a ashtray or anything like that. It's just a hint, a hint at an unsmoked box of cigarettes. And there's a tiny bit of rose. There's violet. It's definitely a violety perfume. It's a violety, musky, papery, slightly woody. It's just lovely and it was just so amazing to be able to work with Sarah McCartney and for us to come up with this together. Obviously she did all the clever perfumey work. I just had some ideas and she was the magician that made it all happen and it's one of the best things ever. So of course I had to mention Hush Hush from 4160 Tuesdays. And then my final perfume, it's not really a specific memory that's linked to this but rather multiple fabulous times wearing unspoken musk this has basically become my signature this is my second bottle and I have the matching oil I've worn it so many times this year it makes me feel good it makes me I don't know, it's not that it makes me feel a particular way, it's just, I just bloody well love how it smells. I really love how it smells, it just is so me. The iris in here is amazing, the way that it mixes with the vanilla in the dry down, is iris, vanilla and musk in the dry down is perfection to me, it's absolute perfection. These are of course my favourite notes anyway, so it was always going to be one that I love. It has Immortel, which... I don't always love Immortel, but for some reason Immortel in here is, is perfect to me. It doesn't go too on that curry side, you know, sometimes it can smell a little bit like curry or curry leaf. It doesn't do that to me. It's more like the maple syrup side of Immortel. It's just addictive to me. This is my catnip and it has accompanied me everywhere. I took it to Florence with me, so it's also attached to that wonderful holiday that I had. I wore it so many times in Pisa and in Florence and I've got compliments from it. I've also had insults from it. <laughs> a friend of mine, she picked the bottle up and said, it smells like, what did she, I think she said it smells like, I'm not sure if she said it smells like old ladies or she smells, no, she said it smells like piss. <laughs> My friend Sally, uh, she picked up the bottle, smelt it and said it smells like piss Claire that was the night before now the morning after when we all went out 
that day she picked it up and she wore it and uh, she was absolutely fine with it so I think it's the opening because it does have an animalic note it has civet so that is obviously a little challenging for some people it doesn't seem to bother me even though I don't love animalics or I don't love them in in big doses anyway it it's absolutely fine for me so yeah, I just love it. I, I, I'd say that I love the dry down more than the opening. I love it more when the Immortel is slightly less noticeable and the Civet is slightly less noticeable. The dry down is really to die for. It's for me that Iris Vanilla must combo. It's just out of this world. So I have absolutely loved Unsmoken. Unsmoken? That's a, that's a flanker for Francesca to create. Unsmoke, unsmoken musk. Um, I've loved this, it's accompanied me through 2023 and it has been a very positive and happy constant companion for me. So that is it, they are my most memorable fragrances from 2023. I would love to know what yours are so let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll see you in another video. Bye!